I'm putting my Series 2A back together now after a long time in the garage and a lot of work I'm just fitting new lights new front lamp harnesses from AutoSparks new side and indicators and new headlamps I'm going to be fitting relays for the headlamps and that's what this video was going to be about until I ran into another problem well, I had fun tracking it down and I thought I'd make a short video to take you through the steps that I followed hopefully this is useful to someone out there I'm quite new to vehicle wiring myself so I'm still learning if you're an expert you probably don't need to watch this video so I had got my side lights working no problem and uh, some of this wiring looks quite old um, but actually underneath the loom the original wiring from 1969 is actually very good mostly it just looks a bit dirty in places so I've worked out where the new harnesses connect to the old loom mostly by colour as I say blue and white by British standards is headlamp main blue and red headlamp dip green and red that side indicator green and white other side indicator you can look the colours up in your manual of choice. The wiring diagram for a 2A negative earth is here. The lights in the front wings. I fit a new flasher unit because the old one was quite tired. Sometimes it wouldn't engage at all. I think it was a thermal type with a coil inside that heats and breaks and connects the circuit intermittently. Um, it wasn't always engaging so I fit a new one, a very cheap one, about £2. It worked very briefly and then stopped. It would occasionally make a buzzing sound but nothing more than that. The wiring for a flasher unit is quite straightforward. There are typically three pins, P, X and L. X is where your power feed comes in, so that's your switched ignition wire, probably green. L is for your lamps, i.e. your indicators, that's probably green and brown. That will go off to your indicator switch to be channeled either nowhere or near side or off side, depending on which way the switch is engaged, if it is. And then there's a P pin, which is for a pilot lamp, which in my 2A is a a little pilot ignition light on the dash that, that illuminates orange when the indicator is flashing as a reminder. So I thought my flasher unit was at fault and when I fit the second new one that worked briefly and then stopped and I disconnected the front indicators again which is what I just wired up. The rear ones had been working for a long time and it didn't work and then it did and then it didn't and then I checked the voltage on the green wire the switched ignition going onto the flasher unit and it was very low but not zero and it should have been 12 volt so having also tried to manually earth the dash and different instruments with a, a test cable going from the, the battery earth terminal over back over to the dash I still wasn't getting any joy and then I realised my wipers weren't working either. So, to the wiring diagram. I started tracing through where I had 12 volts, starting with the battery. So, starting with the battery, I wanted to make sure I had 12 volts there. So, I used my multimeter to check. If you are working on wiring on a series Land Rover, I highly recommend you get a cheap multimeter. They don't cost much, but being able to actually check the difference between, you know, sometimes you can you can work out by attaching bulbs and test bulb kits to a circuit. And if the if the bulb lights up, you have voltage. But if you've got a multimeter, you can also actually measure the voltage. 
Now in this case it was really important for me to see that there was a voltage on that switched ignition wire but not much. Okay, It's very telling, it wasn't zero, there was some but not enough to, to power things. So with this multimeter you, I switch it to direct current because we're working with 12 volt DC and I set the range to 20 range which is 2 to 20 where 12 volt sits and then I can measure actual voltages. So I measured the voltage across the battery, so that's where the power starts, and that was fine. Next, the power goes to the starter solenoid, okay? So then I measured the voltage across different points on the starter solenoid back to the earth terminal on the battery, and I had 12 volts there as well. So then, Although in the diagram you're looking for a white and red wire to go to the ignition switch and a brown one to go to the voltage regulator box, I, you know, I've just got very dirty wires back there behind the engine because they're very old. They're intact but they're dirty so I had to, to follow some wires and also do some guesswork. I started with the voltage regulator which I didn't think would be the problem, it was a bit loose on the dash so I tightened it up, but the earth is explicitly on a pin here, so that wasn't the problem. So knowing I've got 12 volts at the battery and the starter solenoid, so I'm making my way towards my flasher unit which is down here, okay. I'm now at the ignition switch, so I pull the dash off. I want to find the cable that goes on the pin that should be giving 12 volts to my ignition switch. Now the colours are long gone so instead I'm looking for which one when I pull it off the oil pressure and charge lights go out Okay, on the dash because that's telling me I've removed the power feed up to the dash. So I found which wire that was, and I measured the voltage in there, and that was 12 volts. So I've got 12 volts right up to the ignition switch. Now, it gets interesting. Um, it does go off to the light switch, but my side lights were working fine. So I'm thinking it's not a problem in this direction. So now we're going this way. We've checked the red voltage regulator box, so we're going this way. We end up at the fuse box. Ah, I think. The fuse box! Why didn't I check the fuses before? The fuses, the fuse, has everything hanging off it. I've got indicators, I've got my flasher unit, I've got my, my wiper switch, the, you know, stop lights, I've got other things up here. I've got everything hanging off the other side of this fuse box. So I go and check the fuse. The fuse is fine. I, um, I do a continuity check on the fuse itself. And what that is, is on a multimeter, you can measure the resistance up at the end. Looks like a horseshoe, it's ohms I think. Um, and I can put it around to there for an audible alarm. So because I still hadn't found the problem, I decided to run a continuity check on the fuse itself. And that's another good reason to get a cheap multimeter. A continuity check will tell you if two metallic points are connected. It doesn't have to be a current on the circuit. The multimeter itself provides the circuit. And if the two points you touch are connected, the circuit completes and you hear a sound. So even though the fuse looked okay, I wanted to check it. Another occasion I've recently used that is when I could not get the main beam dash light to come on. And in the engine bay on the old loom I had two blue-white wires and I wasn't sure which one should be feeding the main beam dash light. One of them had 12 volts on it when the lights were switched on 
and on main beam. So I figured that was for feeding the lights. The other one had nothing on it. So then I did a continuity check between that wire in the loom and the bottom of the bulb holder beneath where the bulb screws in. Because I checked the bulb and the bulb was fine. And I heard the beep, so I knew the bottom that that bulb was fed by that wire because they're connected. So then I knew that the, the blue white wire with the 12 volts on just had to go into a double connector to pass a current not only to the headlamps but also back to the headlamp dash bulb, main beam dash bulb. It wasn't lighting because the bulb, although when I tested it, it lit up, the solder. Um, bump on the bottom of the bulb had, bulb had been worn away over time so when I screwed it in it wasn't contacting the bottom of the bulb holder anymore so when I screwed in a new bulb with a raised solder piece on the bottom it did work but continuity check really helped there as well so the fuse was fine and so I carried on looking for other problems. I measured the voltage to my, on the green switched ignition wire to my wiper switch. I knew the wipers had been working. That was really low as well. I measured it on the green switched ignition wire to the flasher unit. That was really low. I measured it a couple of other places like the ignition warning light and that was low but not zero. So I knew there was some resistance creeping in somewhere. So I'm starting to think I've got to find a sort of a burnt wire or a broke wire, you know, somewhere. Um, so then I, I measured from one side of the fuse box to the other. A continuity check, just like I had done with the fuse itself, but this time on the fuse box, to see if the 12 volts was getting across from this side to all of these green ignition switched wires that are fused by this fuse. And although the fuse by itself gave me great continuity and no resistance, measuring from this point to this point, there was, there was almost nothing. There was so much resistance, there was barely any voltage, but there was something. And they were a lot dirtier than you're looking at now. So I took the fuse out and I scrubbed up all the contacts with a wire brush, took those spades off, put them back on, cleaned things up. And then before testing things, I did a continuity check again. And this time I got a solid beep every single time when I measured the voltage, it was a very high 11 volts, which is typically what you get on the uh, ignition switched wires anyway. So I thought, that's brilliant. I think I might have fixed it. All of these ignition switched wires, I've had very low voltage on behind the dash. I've just definitely improved something here. So I walked around and turned the wipers on and they worked. And then I reconnected the flash unit and that worked. And now my indicators work. So, these are the kinds of things that people who've had Land Rovers a lot longer than me will helpfully sort of suggest you on forums because they've worked through it all before. But if you do get a cheap multimeter, play around with it, work out how to use it. And when you've got a problem, just work through, once you've ruled out basic things like the bulbs working, the thing is definitely earthed, then you can trace your voltage all the way from the battery to work out where it stops being 12 volts and why. So I hope that's useful to someone. If you've seen me doing anything that you know better, let me know in the comments below. I'm still learning. Yeah. Alright, see you soon.